All right, here we go. Here's the take we're going to use in the video. <laughs> this is take number six. I can't talk today. Today we are doing a clothing haul. So many of you have been asking me saying, hey Karen, do a clothing haul. So today I have dragged out my racks into the living room, loaded them with clothes that I have been picking up. This clothing haul is pretty much from Goodwill. Now I do source a lot of different places, but I'm pretty sure most of this clothing is Goodwill clothing. So in my area, let me just backtrack and say I find better hard goods, but I do pick up clothing. But a lot of times I'm not showing the clothing because I feel it's very bread and butterish. But you guys have been asking for a clothing haul, so that's what we're doing today. I like to create videos of what you're interested in. And if you have not hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now and give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. So as you can see, I have Betsy here behind me and I threw this dress on her. Let me put her back, see if you can get a full shot of her. So Betsy is wearing a beautiful dress that I picked up in Goodwill and I'm gonna turn her around so we can see the tag. You know what, I might even have to take this dress off of, off of Betsy here. Chi Chi, Chi Chi London. Now I didn't know the name Chi Chi, which means nothing. I'm sure I don't know a lot of brands, but when I saw the embroidery on this beautiful little frou-frou dress, I said, oh yeah, and then there were two of them. So I did pick up both of them, and in my Goodwill, the big Goodwill, dresses are, I believe, $6.95. Is that what they are? $6.50, somewhere between $6.50 and $6.95. I go to so many stores, I lose track of who is charging what, but let's just call it $7. And this is a elastic smocked, top it's a bustier style does come with spaghetti straps they are new and when i looked up chi chi i saw that it is a brand recognized online quite a few on ebay and i thought this one was spectacular look at the embroidery on that how fun is that not quite sure where where a woman would wear this to but i said yes and i'm thinking probably about 40 to 50 dollars per dress I will report back as I always do for you guys on my Instagram. So if you want to go over to Instagram and follow me there, Lavender Clothesline, I always report back on what my items are bringing. Mostly that's what I'm doing over there, just showing you guys what many the items are bringing. So first out of the gate is this Chi Chi dress and I got two of them. The other one is hanging on the rack over here. Just bring it over this way. And that is what it looks like. The bottom is beautiful. It has a tool overlay with this. I forgot what this hem is called. It's a curly hem, but there is a name, Waterfall. It might be called Waterfall because it has a real ruffle, a ruffle edge with a piping. And it's in black. And what sizes are these? This is a size eight. So I think they're both the same size. I'll check on that, but beautiful peacock design. Okay, so I hope this angle is good. I hope this lighting is good. I did not set up any lighting today because I am just listing. I am just by my desk with my new computer, listing, editing photos, and really trying to pump out some listings. Hopefully today I'll probably get about 30 to 40 listings on, but I figured let me stop work and do a haul for you guys because you guys have been asking for a clothing haul and I was kind of in the mode to do it and the sunshine is good. So hopefully this angle is good on the camera. Leave a comment down below if you like me to stand way further back and I'll try to put the microphone on higher. Now you won't be able to see the tags of the clothing as well, but you will be able to see the full piece of clothing or if you like me closer to the camera and I will hold up the item, you might not see the full item. You'll get the gist of what I'm showing, but you'll see tags better. So do you want tags better or do you want the full article of clothing better? All right, let's go on to item number two. The next type of item that I pick up quite a bit of are men's cargo shorts. You can see how wrinkled these are. I have not processed these at all. These are American Eagle. I'm getting these for a pants price, which is $4.95. And I look for men's cargo shorts that are a heavy weight cotton, not the thin ones, but usually these are a very heavy weight. And I picked them up American Eagle, of course, any of the better brands like Patagonia or, you know, that type of name. And Ralph Lauren, I pick up 
who else do I pick up? I'm trying to think. If the name comes to me, I'll remember to say it. But I got these, and these are in, out of one through 10, I'm gonna say these are like a seven. Now, I do judge clothing quite heavily. I judge it on the condition it's in. I don't want clothing that has a lot of wear. I'm definitely not shaving sweaters. Pretty much at this point, I think it's rare. I use a shaver. I want the clothing I pick up to be ready to just go into the washing machine, be steamed and done. I don't want to have to do a lot of repairs unless it's a high-end brand and it warrants my time with sewing it. But Back to cargo shorts, I picked these up, so we're paying under $5, depending on the quality and the style and the condition. Those three criteria, I will get anywhere from, I'm gonna say between 20 and $40. I have gotten even higher for really nice prints in a cargo, whether it's a camo, or um, I've got an American flag, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, one time I got superheroes printed right on the cargo shorts. Those brought crazy high money. I've never seen those again, but I went ahead and picked these up. Now this is, let me take these off the hanger for you. This is a style that I think um, is quite popular. This is called the American Eagle Extreme Flex. And I think the men like the Extreme Flex because there's real movement in the material. It really has a little bit of a give to it. Almost like when women choose denim jeans that have a stretch to it. It's a more active um, comfort fit. So I went ahead and picked these green ones up. I'm gonna call them green, it's like a green gray. I also got the same pair in a khaki. This is also called tobacco, this color. I don't know that American Eagle is calling it tobacco, but I call it tobacco. When you see this color in Timberland, I think they call it wheat. But in my listing, I will call this khaki or khaki golden. And uh, next level flex. So this is a flex line uh, pair of cargo shorts, but a little bit different. But again, cargo pockets. Now, a trick I learned early on, I might have shared this already, is Quite a few times in different thrift stores, if I have extra time and the pants, uh, shorts, sorry, are hanging all in a row, swimsuits, the same thing. When they have this cargo pocket, a lot of times I find money in this cargo pocket. I think especially for swimwear, when men are going to the beach, young men especially, I think, because the sizes are smaller, I see that the cargo pocket will have a $20 bill uh, $10 bill, $5 bill. I don't know if the guys are just grabbing money and putting it in that pocket and they are out the door or what, but one time, I won't name the thrift store, it wasn't a Goodwill, I came away with $34 from that trip just by going down the aisle and feeling the cargo pockets. So I don't really have that kind of time nowadays and Goodwills do check their pockets more so than not, but um, uh, quite a few thrift stores do not check cargo pockets. So just a side note there, I figured I'd throw that in. Okay, and today I am taking Claritin, but you can hear I have a little frog in my throat, but we're just gonna keep pushing through. These allergies are a killer today. So uh, just bear with me and hopefully I will get through this video. All right, next pair, same type of shorts. This is the camo. And these are American Eagle Extreme Flex. So I think one gentleman, because they're all a 30 waist, donated three or four pairs, and I went ahead and scooped them all up. Now the condition that those are in and the style and the amount of wear, I'm probably thinking probably 20 to $22. So not bad for an under $5 buy-in price. Next pair of shorts, men's shorts again. This is a brand I always love to pick up. So look at that reverse uh, waistband, Robert Graham. And many of you know I have shown Robert Graham in dress shirts, but this is Robert Graham men's shorts. So you could see Robert Graham usually has his signature in uh, embroidered. So just a plaid short. And I think these will do quite well. Probably I'm thinking 30 and above and same price that I paid. Just know that all of the clothing on both racks is from Goodwill. I think two different locations, two or three. Next up is, I always say next up, is a men's Hawaiian shirt. So it's a button down shirt, beautiful, beautiful print. I love this print. And this is Tommy Bahama. And I believe this is a silk 
seeing if the tag looks like the tag might have been cut out. I'm going to look for an inner material content tag. You always look on the side and there it is. And let's see what this is made out of. Oh, this is linen silk. 55% linen, 45% silk. Now in my titles, when I have a shirt like this, I will also put Magnum at the end. So I will put Tommy Bahama, extra large men's Hawaiian shirt, button down, floral print, Magnum. And Magnum is Magnum P.I. Uh, swoon, <laughs> a little swoon. <laughs> you know, I like my, okay, here we go down a rabbit hole. I love um, Tom Selleck in his older, more mature roles, Blue Bloods, Yes, please, all day long. I would have married him in a heartbeat. I, I love sharing this with you guys. Magnum P.I. is a TV show I'm sure we're all familiar with, and he wore Hawaiian shirts. So a lot of times, eBay listings will have Magnum in them, and people look for Magnum shirts. It has nothing to do with you know him having a company and making the shirt. You're just saying it's that style shirt. Okay, so to be truthful, I pulled this next item I'm not sure if I showed this or not. I pick up a lot of Harley Davidson denim. So this is a men's denim vest with the big patch on the back and the front, uh, brand new with tag, has the pins and the patch. But like I said, I might have showed this a while ago and I still have this one in my store. I'm gonna have to revisit where I have this priced and see what the comps are because this has not moved yet and we're coming into the real motorcycle season. So when that happens, I will go back and take a look at my pricing just to make sure I am competitive. Now I don't take a lot of low offers. I don't take any low offers and I don't go in and groom my items a lot. But once in a while, if an item catches my attention and I kind of say, huh, wonder why that's not selling. This is the season for it, I will revisit the listing just to see if I can tweak the listing to make it sell. Okay, again, I don't know if I showed this dress or not. I just grabbed items off of the big racks downstairs to talk about. And guys, I've lost track of what I've shown and what I haven't, but we're going to show this one. And then after that, most of this stuff is picked up the other day. So we'll get on with it. But this is a dress that I thought is really good for cottage core. We all know cottagecore is the trending term right now. I'm sure we're all gonna be sick of it in another month or two if we're not already. Most of it is floral. It has a lot of ruffles to it, and it looks like the woman lives in a thatched roof cottage in Ireland. But this is beautiful. You can also call this prairie. I'm gonna stand back a little bit for you. Let's move Betsy out of the way. See how far back I can stand. So that's what that looks like. Again, I paid a little bit under $7. This one is listed. I'm not even sure what I have that listed uh, for. If you want to see what that dress is selling for or what it will sell for, you can look at my store, Lavender Clothesline. You can sort my store by solds too to see what I'm selling. You can do that with any store if you're not familiar with that. You just go into a person's store on eBay and you sort by solds. You can also just sort any listings. So say you want to see what a cottage core dress is selling for the average. You just type it into an eBay search and you go down the left hand side and in the margin you'll see sold. You check that off and all of the solds for that style that had those keywords in the title will come up and that way you can learn how to price your items if you don't quite feel confident yet in pricing your items. Okay let's swing the rack back a little bit. Now here's a dress that is an oversaturated brand. This is Ann Taylor Loft. I'm sure we all know that label. And I picked this up because the style is gonna carry this dress. This is so cute. It's got a small floral print, almost geometric, really sweet. It is a shift style. Shift style means where the dress kind of hangs off the body. It does not hug the body. It's very loose and flowy. I love a good shift dress and they're great with boots. Any kind of shoe goes with it, sandal, pump. And then this has a dropped waist. See how the waist is way down here? It would almost fall at the hip. And then it's got the bigger print on the bottom. So I went ahead and picked this up a little under $7. Now this is new with tags. 
in Ann Taylor loft. This is loft outlet. Uh, the dress went for $80. But years ago, I worked for Ann Taylor Loft Outlet, and the majority of the items were priced in the store for sale. Many major companies do that. That's their business model. I have copied that model in my eBay store where you set the price, and it doesn't mean it's never that price. It is, but sales are often run so that that price fluctuates all the time. So when I worked at Ann Taylor Loft, um, say on a Monday, I think our sales started on a Monday, it, you would have 25% off and that would run X amount of days and then it would come off sale. It might stay at its regular price for a couple of days a week and then go into a different sale. So that price was always changing and that's what I like to do in my eBay store also. This item is a jacket in a silver. This is like a metallic silver. Look at that sheen. And this is Hunter. Now this is Hunter's collaboration with Target. I'm sure we all know Hunter Boots, which back in the day used to bring crazy high money Hunter Boots, and now they still do well, but not as well as they used to. But I still go ahead and pick up Hunter Boots, but this is Hunter's collab with Target, and it's just a silver jacket. Now I believe this is a men's jacket. This, I think, when you look at Target's ad for this jacket. There is a man wearing the jacket, but in my title, I believe I put men's jacket and then I put unisex in the title because I don't see any reason why anybody couldn't wear this jacket. Really nice jacket. And I think they counted this as either a sweater or a blazer. Sometimes when I get to the register at Goodwill, I don't know what they're going to charge me. I have learned to stand there with my 400 items. And as they ring up the items, say, what does this count as? What does this count as? Because many times they will overcharge all the different cashiers, charge a different amount for a different thing. And Goodwill is always saying they're going to go to the individually priced item so that every item will be marked. So far, they have not accomplished that. I don't imagine they're going to do that. That's going to be a lot of work for them, and I don't think they have the manpower. But we could wait and see and see how that works out. But I said yes to this hunter jacket, and again, I have no idea what I've listed this for. I'm guessing 40. I don't even know, guys. But um, I am running full capacity. So the times I don't know something or make a mistake on something, which I'm sure my mistakes are plentiful, feel free to leave a respectful comment down below. I always appreciate you guys when you give me information and just know that it's not a lack of caring on my part. I'm working like 70 hours a week and just doing the very best job I can. This item I'm always happy to find. When I find a North Face, new with tag, with the big logo, I always pick that up as long as it's in new condition. Now, I do pick up North Face when it's in pre-owned condition if it's very good. Lately, I've been leaving the t-shirts and the things that are just so saturated. Here in Lancaster County, we have outlets and we have a North Face outlet. So we do see a lot of North Face in this area. So the regular bread and butter things, the t-shirts, unless they've got that really good graphic, I have a tendency, uh, I've just started this probably in the last six months to leave them on the rack, unless it's a good color or it's brand new or because it's just, again, so saturated. You really have to judge that. You know, you might think you have a good item with a good brand name and it might be good, but if it's just a plain same old same old you might want to give it a second thought of picking something up unless your business model is that you're getting something for a dollar and flipping it for $9.99 but if you're putting money into it like this I would imagine they count it as a sweater so I had to pay six dollars for this but you can see it's new with tags it's genuine it's got all the right labels because North Face is faked and when I look at North Face I look for see this hologram I don't know if that's going to show up. See, it's got the hologram to it. So this is a genuine North Face product. You do want to check and make sure that your tags are correct for uh, North Face. So I said yes to this. And I don't know what I'm going to price this at. This does not have a price on it from the tag. The tag is cut, but I imagine I'm going to put this probably $30, 35 Okay, last one on this rack, Miss Me Jeans. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with Miss Me Jeans. Now, Miss Me Jeans used to bring crazy high money. I'm sure we all know that. And then everybody was listing them, and it did come down quite a bit, probably like half what we used to get for them. 
With Miss Me jeans, people really want the highly, highly embellished. These were kind of on the fence, like mediocre embellished, but I was in the mood and I picked them up. So they do have some rhinestones on the back, not as blingy as they could be, and they do not have the flap on the pocket. And on top of it, it is a, a stone wash with a whiskering. See these lines? This is called whiskered, but these are a flare leg. And even though straight leg is not as in style as it used to be, I went ahead and picked these up. Now, the leg on jeans, I think, is more like a stovepipe wide and almost like a flood level. So until we get a real sense of what style in jeans is gonna stick, in other words, it's gonna be in the fashion trend, for the duration, meaning six months, nine months, it's very hard to know what to really saturate your store with. So when Skinny Leg came in for jeans, that was with us for what, two years? And everybody was wearing them, so it was a safe bet. But quite a few times, different styles come in and go out very quickly. So I don't wanna pick up a 100 pairs of something to find out that the population did not want that style. But with Miss Me, I figured it's a boot jean. This to me looks a little bit more like a flare. It's not real wide. But to me, boot is kind of like a wider leg that just gets a tiny bit wider to go over a boot. Flare is where it's narrow, and then it comes out like a bell, like bell bottoms used to be. I, I guess that's all correct, but I went ahead and said okay for Miss Me jeans. Now in this store, I'm paying $7 a pair for jeans. So I pick up very few pairs of jeans in Goodwill because I feel that's very overpriced. All right, so that finishes rack number one. We're gonna go on to rack number two and see what I picked up. I think I'm gonna swing it around this way. Whoops, almost made my rack fall apart. <laughs> Is this rack sturdy? Come on, rack. We got, we got a sway in the rack going on. This is one of the cheaper racks. All right, that seems like it's gonna hold. The next item that I picked up were cycling jerseys. Here, again, in Lancaster County, we have a huge population of people that cycle. So quite often, I find cycling gear and cycle clothing in our thrift stores. Now, in the clothing, I look for the bibs. That's the one piece. It's like a short, a compression short that has almost like, if you will, like suspenders on it. It's all attached. It's called bibs. And I look for the jerseys. So when I look for jerseys, I hardly ever look at the brand name. I'm looking at the graphic of the jersey and the condition of the jersey because people might put, cyclists might put a lot of money into special jerseys and bibs when they're doing an event or something like that. But for their regular practice days, I believe that they will just pick up items that appeal to them and are secondhand. I sell quite a few cycling jerseys. So we're gonna start with this one. Now usually they have some kind of event on the jersey or um, different sponsors of whatever race they were in, whatever tour they were on. I pretty much go by the colorway and the design. So we're gonna take a look at the design of these jerseys and you can tell why I picked them up. This is a beautiful sunburst pattern and it has bike wear on it and this was for a rally now when you see these shirts almost always they will have these pockets in the back for the cyclists to put their things this one has the security pocket with the zipper so that is the first one i'm just going to throw them over here on this chair the second one i love this one look how good this is so it is a graphic of rabbits in a race and Wabbits, W-A-B-I-T-S. How fun is that? If I was a cyclist, I would want to wear that. That's number two. These are all men's sizes. This one I really liked for the colorway, T-Rock. That's what the back looks like. And this was Tandem Rally of Colorado 2000. So already 21 years old, but this is in great shape. 
Now this many jerseys together, and I didn't take, I took this many, I think I have about nine of them, and I left about five of them behind because I did not care for the colorway at all. I'm paying $5 for these, and truthfully, I have to comp what this size jersey will bring and the condition of it. So I'm thinking probably around 25 to 30. So you're turning five into, let's say 25 before fees. This one might be a little bit higher because it is Mickey. Look how good this one is. Always, always happy to find a Disney uh, cycling jersey. Let's see who puts this out. Oh, this is Disney by Gloriana, it looks like. So this is Mount Mickey, and Donald is riding up. And yeah, pockets in the back. Next one up, really, really vivid colors. And this one is Pennsylvania by the Dutch pattern. So this is Strasbourg, Pennsylvania. Next up, I don't know what this one was from. Toys. Greetings from Key the Keystone State, Adams County. So the Keystone State is Pennsylvania. I don't know if this was Toys for Tots, Tandems of York Society. I'm not exactly sure. But again, I really liked that it had this burst of color on it. So in other words, with cycling jerseys, I'm looking for bright colors, fun patterns, um, something funny or sweet or something like that, that, that would speak to the cyclists. This one was great, a little bit dark in here. I think, I think I'm losing my sunshine. This is grapes. We have a very big wine community here. We have a lot of vineyards in Pennsylvania. And I thought this was beautiful. Glory, Glory Dana, Gory Dana. I don't even know how to say that. Giori Dana, let's say, I should say that right. G-I-O-R-D-A-N-A, -A, it looks like. Giori Dana, probably saying that wrong. And the last one is this one here. This reminded me of a golf, um, you know, a golf shirt, Teen Campbell. So I'm not sure what that is about. And what does this say? Championsystem.com. So those are the cycling jerseys that I picked up. Like I said, five into 25, 30. The Mickey one might even bring more. So I always pick up cycling jerseys, good condition, bright colors, nice graphic. Okay. Next up, totally different. <laughs> We're going a different way. Sweatshirts and t-shirts with cat prints. Yes, please. I always pick these up. Nice bright yellow, beautiful condition. I don't even know if this is worn. And this is manufactured by Airwaves Incorporated. I think this will do well. These always do better when they're bigger sizes. This is an extra large. And I pay sweater price for this, $5.75. I'm thinking probably the $30 mark for that one. Okay, another North Face. Now I picked this one up because it's in gorgeous condition. I wish this was my size. This is extra large. Just a zip up fleece jacket. Looks, looks almost brand new. And again, I would have paid $5.75 for that one. That North Face would probably bring, I'm thinking 30, 35, probably closer to the 30, 32, let's say, most likely. I'm so glad that I pulled this next item and put it on the rack. This is something that I've been wanting to talk a little bit about, and I'm sure you guys are noticing it too. This skirt is a beautiful skirt. Now, I don't know that you'd wear this to the office. You'd probably wear this to an event, you know, to a function. And this is the label Kate Spade. So you would think, oh, I found a Kate Spade skirt. In my opinion, a lot of the brands that we consider good handbag brands or, um, you know, just a brand that just a couple of years ago would have been a real woohoo is just meh. I don't know. Not to say Kate Spade doesn't bring the money. I'm sure there are a lot of items where it does really well. But the Kate Spade that I find just does okay unless it's really something that people want to wear. So picture if you had this skirt hanging in your closet. How many functions do you think you'd really wear this to? It's like pink, purple, and gold. Very pretty. To me, it looks kind of 90s. It's a nice Easter color skirt, but is anybody wearing like metallic skirts? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. And I'm going to show you the label, Kate Spade, New York, Skirt the Rules. 
So this is a size two, which again is going to hurt it. And that's what that looks like. Why did I pick this up? It's a little bit hard to walk away from when you're used to seeing, you know, average everyday brands and then you see a Kate Spade. So because my thrift stores are saturated with everyday brand clothing, when you see something a little bit better, even though it has the two working against it, the colorway is working against this, that it's metallic, where is somebody going to wear this? Sometimes I still pick it up. I have to say, I think this is going to sit a long time in my closet. And again, if this sells through quickly, I think I just listed this. I will eat my words and tell you guys, oh, the Kate Spade skirt sold quickly. I'll report back and let you know, but I think we're going to be sitting on this for quite a while. Okay, we're going to breeze through the next few because I have all of those listings by my desk and I'm sure you guys don't want an hour video of me talking about what clothes I pick up. This was on the dollar sale. So Goodwill is currently having a sale. I think it was March 28th through the 31st, through the 30th. Today's the last day. All purple color barb, 99 cents. And it, the sale started Sunday. I almost never thrift on a Sunday. It's usually a day of rest for me. Rest as much as, you know, not shopping. Sometimes I go to the mall, truth be told. So when I shopped, this was yesterday's pickup, and I saw that it was purple tag or purple barb, 99 cents. So I went ahead and grabbed this one. This is Chico's, and it's a size one, which, what is a Chico's one? I think it's an eight really pretty skirt. The reason I grab this is this is a great skirt for the summer. It's pull on, so it's got an elastic waist and you're just pulling this over. So this is even great if you go to the beach and you're, you know, walking the boardwalk or if it's, um, if you're traveling and you just want to throw stuff in your suitcase and not get wrinkled. So I will put beach cover up and travel in my keywords at the end of the title to draw the attention of people and give them ideas of when they would wear this skirt. But it's also great for cocktail, for you can wear this to work, very versatile and that's why I like this style skirt. I'm going to stand back so you can see it. It does have a slit towards the bottom, but I don't think the slit is overly a lot. Sometimes you'll find skirts that are slit up to the thigh and it's more like you have like flaps on. <laughs> I'm not quite sure who wants to wear those skirts, but I thought this was really nicely made. And like I said, great condition, size one. I do have a Chico's chart printed out in my office so that when I'm listing a Chico's item, I can put Chico's one US eight. I'm pretty sure it's an eight. So that's what I do with Chico's or any clothing that has vanity sizing or a different than standard sizing. I make sure I put US with the regular size in the title. And that way the person who's not familiar with the vanity sizing or Chico's, you know, different type sizing, they can tell right away when they're looking at my item what size the item really is. Okay, another item, the 99 cent tag. I don't think I would have paid $6 for this, but I really like this dress. This is vintage. I think this is 90s. I'm going to show you the label first and see if there's a date on this. I don't see a date. It's in great condition. This is Main Street Classics which pretty much no matter what this said, unless it was like Kmart or something like that, I would have picked it up anyway, not for Kmart, but pretty much for anybody else. I don't think that Main Street Classics means anything. I don't think people look for Main Street Classics as a general rule. I will put the brand in, but towards the end of the title. So when an item has a branding that doesn't really care. They matter more about the style. The person is looking more for that style, whether it's cottage core or I'm trying to think prairie dresses, um, the rayon dresses with the tie back. I forgot what they're called. They're very 90s. Um, floral print, usually long. Those, I'll keep the title of the item at the end of my listing keywords and put the style towards the front. So again, I'm going to stand back so you can see this dress that I got for a dollar.
So this is a button down. I wouldn't mind wearing this dress. I'm not really a long dress person and it has this lattice open ladder. They either call this ladder back or um, is a barb here or lattice back and uh, beautiful condition. Doesn't look like it's worn. So for a dollar, it's kind of a no brainer. And I'll probably start this at like $30 to see how it does. Now finding, I really can't call this cottage core in my opinion, because it's got bigger tropical print. I will go down more the path of beachy tropical for the keywords for this uh, to describe the style of the print. All right, let me just say I miss St. Patty's Day altogether, <laughs> but picked this up anyway. It is a green satin corset, and I have no idea, guys, why I picked this up, but I did, and I don't even know. I think I paid full price for this, which I don't know what they counted this as. Probably a top, knowing Goodwill, and this is made by, couldn't even say this one. It's V-A-A-C-O-D-O-R, Vacodor, Vacodor, no clue, but I picked it up, so that, that might be a womp womp, but very good condition and like i said if i would have caught this well before st patty's day it would have done better i would have put that in the title so we'll just see we'll see how this does i doubt that's going to fly out this store this one again is new with tag it was 25 dollars in marshall's and this is solitaire i think we know that name kind of bread and butterish but the style of this is gorgeous very romantic it has a crocheted lace sleeve and hem. And the size on this was a good size, I remember thinking, 2X. So beautiful, romantic, and it has a couple of buttons. Oh no, the, it buttons all the way down. I was thinking it only had one or two buttons, but it's got a full button. And I paid a blouse price um, for $4.95, $4.95, I think. Not sure what I'll get for that. Again, I think 30. Uh, but then again, if the tag is saying 25, I might get 23. I won't get the Marshall's tag price and I will leave that on to show it's new. Oh, <laughs> this wound up on the rack. I bought this for me. <laughs> now you're gonna see what I buy. After all of that nice lace and satin corsets, yeah, this is mine. This is a t-shirt, truly, truly madly deeply. No clue. Size large, which will be a little bit big on me, but it's gray with koi fish. This is so my style. So now you're going to see what I buy. I should put that into videos because once in a while I'll pick up something for myself. I'll say, it'll just speak to me. I don't try it on or anything. I just throw it in the cart. So not for resale, just for me. Charcoal gray or almost black koi fish printed t-shirt. I love all things like Japanese style. I love a Japanese like floral print, uh, like cherry blossoms, koi fish. What else do I like? And it's funny because my mom, who passed away a couple of years ago, she really liked that too. So it's funny, it must be in the DNA that you just get attracted to certain things in life. Okay, three more pieces and we are done. And I feel like my voice is just smoothing out. <laughs> I'm getting my stride. Uh, I should make another video, but I really want to get those listings on. I've been doing better with getting listings on more so because when I get really busy with YouTube and projects, like right now I'm redoing my office, I still list, but I'm listing less and I do see a drop in my sales. So not a horrible thing, but I'm mindful of it. So once in a while I say to myself, okay, I'm really going to press in this week and get really listing probably 30 a day, something like that. I'll really try to pump out as much as I can. So today that is my plan right after I do this video, just to sit my bum down in my office chair and get all of my listings on. Now I did do all the cleaning of the shoes. I stayed last night in one place and just brought all the shoes to my chair in front of the TV. I watched some British movie mystery thing, some, you know, uh, what do I want to say? Some detective thing. I don't even remember what it was called. I think it's a series right now on the Brit channel. And I had a cup of tea, a proper cup of tea, and clean shoes. Doesn't that sound like fun night? But I got everything done and photographed this morning and all of it is by my desk. I do things by batches. Kudos to you guys who use an iPhone. And I do have an iPhone and, and create your listings one at a time. I'm still old school. I use my camera. I'll take like this batch is 350 photos. So I take all 350, I edit all 350, and then it's just there in my iCloud 
or pCloud just ready to get loaded into my listing. So that's how I list. Okay, men's vest. This seems to be new. This is Nike. And it seems ho-hum until you turn it around and it has swoosh on the hood. Let's see if we can get that in the camera. So there is that. And good size. And I thought this will do quite well. I think Goodwill probably charged me the, I'm going to say the sweater price for this either the sweater price or the shirt. So figure about $5.50 for this, and this is a medium, it's dry fit. So if this was just a black vest with a check mark, I don't know if I would have picked it up. I probably would, but the hood was the deciding factor for me. And I think guys that go to the gym like this, so I might put a uh, gym hoodie as the description. Also good for basketball players. Guys just wearing athleisure, they like vests and, um, you know, especially if they're showing off those arms. I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, Mets jersey. Yes, please. All day long. So this is majestic and there is the patch there. And it's got its tags. Now this one you can see, by the way, this has a little bit of wear that it's probably a little bit older made in korea so i'm thinking that's 90s i could be wrong about that Let's see if it has any inside tags that give me a date might have the nike uh not the nike the majestic number on it and that might tell me if i google it yeah i'm not seeing a date on this at all i'm guessing probably 90s oh we could probably duh, look it up i'm so sporty by when this man played for the Mets, if he's still there currently, or, you know, you could just put his name into a Google search and see when he played. So if he played for a long time for the Mets, then you know that it's going to be harder to pinpoint what year or grouping around what year the jersey was made. But if he only played for the Mets for three years, then you know the jersey was made during that time because Majestic's not going to make a jersey for a player that, you know, is long um, done playing for that team. That probably makes no sense at all. I know what I'm talking about. All right, last item. <laughs> we're, we're ending on a ho-hum. This is Campia, C-A-M-P-I-A. -A. Now do not run out and buy a lot of that tag. I picked this up and I chose to talk about it today because Hawaiian button-down Magnum shirts generally are good. This one I was on the fence about because there's a lot of this brand and a lot of times these only bring $9 or $10. And if you're paying $5 for a shirt, you don't want to do that unless you're only looking to make 50 cents a dollar. But I have sold this one before, the same one. This is probably my fifth one of these and they do okay. So I'm probably going to get $19.99 out of this shirt because it has alcoholic drinks. So it's like a party shirt. If this shirt only had palm trees, I would have left it behind. But it's a good size, it's a large, would have been better if it was a 2X or 3X, but this little drink thing helps it out. So a lot of times when you're looking at these rayon button-down Hawaiian Magnum shirts, pay attention to if it has hula girls on it, if it has, I forget the name of the station wagon with the wood on the sides. What is that station wagon called? I know this. It's not camper. Um, well, you can leave a comment down below if you know what those station wagons are called. If it has like some kind of real different fun party thing going on. If it's just palm trees or palm leaves or um, grass huts, eh. But if it has like Hawaiian girls, like in big print, if it has um, real party, like if it has parrots, parrots are usually good. I'm trying to think of what else, those things. So this brand name, I don't pick up unless it's drinks, alcoholic drinks or better. Even if it had Hawaiian girls, that would have brought even more money. 
but I um, hope all of that is clear. Okay, so that is the clothing haul for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I do want to take this time to give another shout out to Josh Harry Tornado in the reselling community. If you don't know who Josh is, I'm sure you all do. He is a YouTube creator and he talks about reselling and he just hit his 100,000 subscriber on YouTube. So we are all so proud of him. That man works hard and I am definitely a subscriber. I subscribed to his channel very early on. Very gracious. I have asked him his advice before on cameras. He gets right back to me. We have never met in person, but you know, when you find somebody in the YouTube community who is really busy and way above my level, I am always just really honored and very appreciative when a big YouTuber answers their emails and doesn't look down on it like, you know, they don't have time for us little folks. So Josh has always been wonderful. He and his wife Haley and their dog Moe's really fun channel to watch. So if you're not subscribed to Josh, I recommend that you check his channel out. Even though he has reached the 100,000 subscribers, definitely want to check his channel out and the video that he made about achieving that accomplishment. He and two friends took a limousine and went thrifting at Goodwill in a limousine. Very fun. So thank you so much for watching and as always, go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.